If you guys are interested in being a member, then click the join button down below to check out the available perks. The first tier is only $1. Thank you to those of you who choose to join. What's up Mod Squad, welcome to another Division 2 Build Breakdown video. Before we get into the video, if you're already subscribed to me, then don't forget to smash that like button, as it really helps push our videos into the recommended section, which in turn helps your channel grow. Interaction is a big part of what helps us in the YouTube algorithm, and the extra support is very much appreciated. So help us reach that 500 like goal that we never miss here on the channel, and share this video to help other agents. In today's video, we look at my new TU 16.1 Striker Mega Tank DPS build for solo PvE. This is the 2.0 version of the build I made back in TU 14, which really went down well with the community, pulling in 69,000 views. It had a ton of damage, survivability and utility, and was a run and gun build that allowed you to dominate heroic content and have a lot of fun while doing it. It also closely rivaled my Hunters 3 one-man army build, but now is no longer the case. We'll get into that shortly. Now recently the Strikers Battleground gear set got a major buff allowing us to do a lot more damage, but sadly the version that dropped in TU16 was the phase 2 version from the PTS which meant you lost up to 5 stacks per second once past 100 stacks, making it so very difficult to continuously keep stacks up to 200. In TU16 Striker gets its final change to Striker's Gamble, weapon hits increase total weapon damage by 0.65% stacking up to 100 times, 1 stack loss per second between 0 and 50 stacks, 2 stacks loss per second between 50 and 100 stacks, and if you're using the chess piece you'll gain the press the advantage talent which increases max stacks from Striker's Gamble from 100 to 200, 3 stacks loss per second between 100 and 200 stacks. This change to Strikers puts it right up there in the top 2 best weapon based gear sets in the game, and for sure beats out my Hunters 3 one man army build. The Hunters 3 build did hit harder within 15 meters, but with the new buff to Striker's damage, I don't think that's the case anymore. Now what Hunters 3 does have over Striker is more utility in the form of armor and status effect on kill, which is majorly effective and is a great help for new players, but in my opinion what makes Striker better is the damage is quicker to gain and easier to keep, very much like the Heartbreaker gear set. You're also not required to get kills to gain stacks or kill within a 10 second time frame to keep stacks. All you have to do with Strikers is land your shots. Strikers damage also isn't limited by a range like Hunter's Fury, allowing you to do high damage up close and at distance. The lack of utility in my opinion is made up in DPS via RPM and weapon handling, allowing SMGs to perform better at range. When it comes to Strikers, there's just a lot less requirements and restrictions to gain and keep damage. I will be using a chess piece in today's video as it allows us to have 200 stacks and gives us more consistent damage. This build offers an insane amount of damage, survivability and utility, just of one kill alone you gain 50% bonus armor on kill, 10% weapon damage on kill, 5% rate of fire on kill and 10% armor on kill. This isn't including all the crit damage on kill you can stack, helping you reach up to 225% as well as max crit chance depending on what weapon you use. At its base this build has 1.7 million armor and fully stacked is capable of reaching well over 3 million. On top of being a mega tank we have plenty of survivability from the two types of armor on kill as well as 3% armor regen. So not only do we have burst forms of healing but passive healing as well, both types helping in different situations. Now if all this isn't impressive enough, when it comes to the damage numbers when fully stacked you're hitting 1 million plus crits to the head of NPCs and 850 K plus crits to the body, so this build definitely isn't lacking in the damage department. This build is not only great for run and gun, but is also insanely good for medium range fights 20 meters plus, and as you can see you can absolutely melt at that range with an SMG. In my opinion, the only true rival to the striker gear set now is the heartbreaker gear set. Let me know your opinions in the comment section below. To make the most of this build guys, you'll need an aggressive playstyle to keep both damage and armor stacks active, the more you kill, the stronger you'll become. This is a perfect build for all heroic content whether that's control points, bounties, the summit or countdown and is a lot of fun to use. Now we have spoke a little bit about the build and I'll showcase some of what it's capable of, let's get into a quick build breakdown. To start off with the primary weapon we have the SIG MPX, 96k base damage, 978 RPM with 50 in the magazine, you'll also get a 5% RPM boost from the gunner specialization once you've killed an enemy and you could also chain that. When it comes to the talent, we had the killer talent. Killing an enemy with a critical hit grants plus 40% critical hit damage for 10 seconds. Looking at the attachments, we have 5% crit chance on the scope, 5% crit chance on a laser pointer, 5% crit chance on the suppressor, and the magazine gives us the extra 20 rounds. Moving on to our secondary, and I highly recommend using the ACS-12 when it comes to any build that stacks up, like Striker or Heartbreaker. 
20 rounds in a magazine of this, so you have plenty of rounds to get your stacks. When it comes to the talent on here, we have Vindictive. Killing an enemy with a status effect applied grants you and your allies over 50 meters, 15% critical hit chance, and 15% critical hit damage for 20 seconds. That is a nice lengthy buff. Looking at the attachments, we have 5% crit chance on the sight, and 5% crit chance on the laser pointer. If you feel you're doing too much damage with this shotgun and killing enemies too fast, so you're not gaining your stacks, then switch these out for weapon handling based attachments. Onto our sidearm and of course we have the Orbit Pistol because it gives us the perfect finish of talent. This is what you're going to stack on top of your Vindictive talent. Swapping from this weapon within 10 seconds of killing an enemy grants 35% crit chance and 40% crit rate damage for 15 seconds. The attachments 20% reload speed on the drum and 10% accuracy on the sight. Now if you don't have the Orbit you can also use the new Exotic Busy Bee Pistol which will help you easily gain another 60% weapon damage just marking 3 targets. Now moving into the gear pieces guys, starting off with the Striker's Mask, don't forget Striker's gives us 15% weapon handling from its 2 piece, the 3 piece gives us 15% rate of fire, and the 4 piece gives us Striker's Gamble, we have 170k armor, 10.3% critical rate damage and 6% crit chance via a mod. Onto our Striker's Chest piece we have 15% weapon damage, 12% critical rate damage and then 12% critical rate damage via a mod, we gain the Press the Advantage talent which increases max stacks from Striker's Gamble from 100 to 200, 3 stacks lost per second between 100 and 200, all you have to do guys is keep up the aggression and it's easy to keep the stacks up at 200 as you'll see in today's gameplay. Moving on to our holster, we have the named Pakara holster, which gives us 10% skill haste. That applies to our Banshee pulse, so we'll gain that back a little bit quicker. We have 156k armor, 12% critical rate damage, and then 15% weapon damage. Moving on to our striker's knee pads now, we have 170k armor, 11.9% critical hit damage. Our striker's gloves, 170k armor, 11.4% critical hit damage. And then finally, we have the memento backpack, the best exotic in the game in my opinion, and the best thing to use if you're a solo player. 15% weapon damage, 170k armor, 1 skill tier, 12% critical hit damage via a mod, and then we have the kill confirmed talent. Moving on to the skills, we have the decoy, you can choose between either the decoy or the striker drone. I personally favour the striker drone, as it seems to pull more attention and it lasts a lot lot longer. Moving on to our second skill, and this is a big part of the build, we have the banshee pulse. This skill is majorly going to help us run a gun, and it's also going to help us stack all that crit chance and crit damage from the vindictive and finish the talent. Running the Banshee Pulse with these run and gun builds is honestly, in my opinion, one of the best ways to run builds in this game. Looking at the attachments, we have 15% radius and 15% effect duration. And that is pretty much it for the build, guys. Moving on to the stat sheet, not going to talk through it too much. We have 50% critical hit chance, 126.6% critical hit damage, which can go up to 225% if you stack both Vindictive and Finisher on top. This build is packed full of damage, survivability, and utility, and it's just so much fun to run. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. If you haven't already, smash that like button to help us reach that 500 like goal. Share the video to help other agents, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, Mob Squad. What's up Mod Squad, welcome to another Division 2 build breakdown video. Before we get into the video, if you're already subscribed to me then don't forget to smash that like button as it really helps push our videos into the recommended section which in turn helps the channel grow. Interaction plays a big part in what helps us with the YouTube algorithm and the extra support is very much appreciated. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to smash that subscribe button for lots more Division 2 content. Well Mob Squad, Title Update 20 is finally here, and with this new update has come the return and revival of a talent that fell off many updates back. A talent that was a big community favourite, especially for those who love the armour stack in run and gun builds. That talent being Intimidate. Previously, Intimidate would stack 1 stack per second to a max of 7, and each stack increased total weapon damage by 5% to enemies within 10 meters. But now it gains 3 stacks per second up to a max stack of 9 and each stack increases total weapon damage by 4% to enemies within 10 meters. 
Intimidate was a staple talent for those who love the bonus armor stacking builds and with it reworked I thought it was time to pair it with the OG OP run and gun gear set that being Hunter Shuri which also received a little change in title update 20. That change being the health on kill you gain going from 100% down to 50%. Now because this build is all about stacking bonus armor that change doesn't really affect the build and its performance. Also the armor regen this build has will make up for that nerf. Also, if you guys are wondering what SMG I'm using in the gameplay, that would be the newly buffed CMMG Banshee, which received a 5% weapon damage increase as well as a 50% RPM increase, taking it from 900 RPM to 950 RPM. Before this change, I favoured the SIG MPX, but with the damage and RPM increase, it has to be the Banshee. Today's build is one of the most basic and simple builds to make, and it offers an insane amount of utility, damage and survivability. Just off one kill alone you're looking at 30% armor on kill, 50% bonus armor on kill, 50% health on kill, status effect on kill, 5% rate of fire on kill and 15% weapon damage on kill. At its base this build has 1.5 million armor and fully stacked is capable of reaching well over 3 million. So you'll be able to tank mass amounts of damage while you're running and gunning. On top of being a tank we have all the survivability I mentioned earlier plus 3% armor regen so not only do we have burst forms of healing but we also have passive healing as well, both types helping in different situations. This is an outright run and gun solo build that requires an aggressive playstyle in order to survive. With each kill you replenish base armor, stack bonus armor as well as gain damage so the more you kill the stronger you'll get. This build is perfect for all heroic content whether that's control points, bounties or the summit if you have any questions then leave them down in the comment section below and i'll reply like i always do now we spoke a little bit about the build and I'll showcase some of what it's capable of let's get into a quick build breakdown before ending this video with some gameplay right guys starting off with the specialization and we are using the gun our reason being is it synergizes so well with the rest of our build this specialization offers dps survivability and utility as you can see we get the right phone grenade which is great for both PvE and PvP. If you can funnel enemies and then use this grenade you will snare a bunch of them which makes them easier to kill. Up next, killing enemies grants 10% armor which adds on to the 20% we already have on our build taking us to a total of 30%. Next, every third reload is 50% faster that's going to add to DPS and it comes in clutch especially when you're using a low mag SMG. The armor kit on this build gives us 100% armor repair and then 30% bonus armor for 10 seconds. Every specialization has a skill with it that you can unlock and as you can see is the Banshee Pulse. You can see in the gameplay that it is very effective, stuns NPCs making them easier to kill. This specialization also generates 10% of total ammo capacity every 60 seconds. Which is great if you're a solo player because you'll find you'll never run out of ammo. If you're not picking up through NPCs then this specialization will be replenishing it for you. Up next, rate of fire increased by 5% on kill. This is just going to add to our DPS helping us kill faster. 50% pulse resistant that's going to help when you're in a dark zone and that is pretty much it for the specialization so with that said let's move on to the build breakdown right guys starting off with the primary weapon we have the newly buffed cmmg banshee like i said it was buffed by 5% weapon damage and got a 50% rpm increase taking it from 900 rpm to 950 and the talent we have is Killer, killing an enemy with a critical hit grants plus 40% critical hit damage for 10 seconds. The attachments we have are 5% critical hit chance on the site, 20 extra rounds in a magazine, 5% crit chance on a laser pointer, and 5% critical hit chance on the muzzle. Moving on to our secondary and you can either use the ACS-12 shotgun with the vindictive talent so you'll gain an extra 15% crit chance and 15% critical hit damage or you can actually use the name version of the Banshee which is called the grudge and that will give you the perfect vindictive talent so when you kill an enemy within 20 meters you'll gain 18% critical hit chance and 18% critical hit damage for 20 seconds then you can switch back to your primary banshee and you have the extra damage stacked on top either one of these weapons is great to use seeing as we're using hunter's fury and it boosts both smg and shotgun damage Moving on to our sidearm, of course we have the Orbit Pistol, 20% reload speed on the drum and we have 10% accuracy on the sight. The talent of course is the perfect finisher talent, swapping from this weapon within 10 seconds of killing an enemy grants 35% critical hit chance and 40% critical hit damage for 15 seconds. Moving on to the gear pieces now, starting off with our Hunter's Fury Mask, we have 170k armor, 12% critical hit damage and 12% critical hit damage via a mod. 
Our chest piece is Sokolov, giving us 10% SMG damage. We have 15% weapon damage, 6% crit chance, 12% critical hit damage, and 12% critical hit damage via mod, and the newly buffed Intimidate Talon. While you have bonus armor, gain one stack each second up to a max of nine. Each stack increases weapon damage by 4% to enemies within 10 meters. All stacks are lost when you have no bonus armor. Onto our Hunter's Fury holster, we have 170k armor and 12% critical hit damage. Our knee pads are Hunter's Fury, rolled for 15% weapon damage and 10.2% critical hit damage. I have yet to optimize these. Our gloves are Hunter's Fury with 170k armor and 12% critical hit damage. And finally, our backpack is the Memento backpack, the best piece of gear for solo players in the game. We have 15% weapon damage, 170k armor, 1 skill tier, 12% critical damage via a mod, and we have the kill confirmed talent. Which allows us to stack all this bonus armor, as well as gain damage and skill efficiency. So looking at the skills, you could either use a shield, or you can use the striker drone, which serves as a distraction. A 7.5% duration mod here, a 10% health mod and a 4.8% damage mod. Moving on to our second skill, and it is my beloved Banshee Pulse. I absolutely love this skill. This is what helps us pop the Vindictive Talent. We have 15% Radius. The second mod gives us 15% Effect Duration. Moving on to the stat sheet now, guys. We have 52% Crit Chance. You'll gain extra Crit Chance from the talents like Vindictive and Finisher. We have 139.2% Crit or Hit Damage. That'll be dramatically boosted when you gain the Killer Talent, as well as Vindictive or Finisher. Let me know what you think about this build down in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the changes that have come with TU20. There are plenty more videos to come, guys. Let me know your ideas for builds down in the comment section below. It's nice to be back and it's nice to be making videos. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the comment section. Don't forget to smash that like button to help us grow. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, Mob Squad. If you guys are interested in being a member, then click the join button down below to check out the available perks. The first tier is only $1. Thank you to those of you who choose to join. What's up Mod Squad, welcome to another Division 2 build breakdown video. Before we get into the video, if you're already subscribed to me, then don't forget to smash that like button, as it really helps push our videos into the recommended section, which in turn helps the channel grow. Interaction is a big part of what helps us in the YouTube algorithm, and the extra support is very much appreciated. We also have that 500 like goal that we never miss here on the channel, so make sure to smash that like button, and share this video to help other agents. In today's video, I'll showcase an easy to make tank DPS build, for those of you who are returning to the game. This build will be easy to farm for, put together, and will help you steamroll through heroic content. It provides an insane amount of survivability and damage at an extremely fast rate. Without added buffs from Vindictive or Finisher, you can hit near 800k to the head of NPCs and 534k crits to the body. With Finisher and the Vindictive talent stacked together, you can hit 912k crits to the head and 756k to the body. And again, all this damage coming at the speed of 1200 RPM+. Plus. Now for those of you who have been away for a while, in TU15 we got the new gear set Heartbreaker. Now although this gear set was built around assault rifles, the 4 piece is so good, much like Hunter's Fury, it can be used with other weapons and it's still extremely effective. This gear set along with Hunter's Fury are what I'd recommend for those of you who are getting back into the game as they both provide insane amounts of damage and high survivability. I also recommend these two gear sets because they are both great for those of you who like to run a gun. For any of you who are interested in the Hunted 3 version of this build, I'll drop some links to those builds in the description and comment section below. Now when it comes to keeping stacks with this build, once you gain them, they are not difficult to keep. To gain these stacks as fast as possible, like always when it comes to Heartbreak or Striker, I'd recommend using a shotgun, preferably the ACS-12. There are 12 pellets in a single shot, which will allow you to gain max stacks a lot faster as you've seen in the gameplay. Max stacks will give you 50% bonus armor and 50% damage to post enemies. If you're using a chest piece, which we are, 
then those stats go up from 50 to 100. Pulsing enemies is easy as it only requires a single headshot to pulse enemies for 5 seconds. Or you can use the Banshee Pulse which you gain from the Gunner Specialization. Also the Striker Drone has the ability to pulse enemies as it shoots them in the head. Along with helping you pulse the enemies, the Gunner Spec will also boost DPS thanks to the added weapon handling when sitting still and you'll gain 5% rate of fire boost on kill. Gunner will also add to your survivability thanks to the 10% armor on kill. This build has a base armor of 1.3 million and can reach way over 2 million with ease. The trick is, the more aggressive you play, the more survivability and damage you gain. Moving on to the weapon I'm using with today's build, that would be one of the highest DPS weapons in the game, being the Tactical Vector SBR 9mm. If you don't have this version of the Vector, the name Vector The Dark Winter is a good substitute. Now this SMG is one I'd recommend for those of you who really like to get up close and personal, but for those of you who don't want to play that aggressive, I recommend the SIG MPX with Killer or the name SIG MPX to safety distance. Both SMGs do great damage, have a high rate of fire and will also allow you to get easy kills in that 15 to 20 meter range. So you won't have to be right up in the enemy's face. This build is perfect for all horror content whether it's control points, bounties or the summit and is a lot of fun to use. I personally love using this when it comes to control points and I can usually get a control point done in around 3 minutes flat. Now we spoke a little bit about the build and I'll showcase some of what it's capable of, let's get into a quick build breakdown. Right guys, starting off with the primary weapon, we have the Tactical Vector SBR 9mm. As you can see, we have all matched stacks and the talent we are using is Killer. Killing an enemy with a critical hit grants 40% plus critical hit damage for 10 seconds. A talent that's easy to chain as long as you are continuously killing. Looking at the attachments, we have 5% crit chance on the scope, 5% crit chance on a laser pointer, 5% crit chance on the suppressor, and the magazine gives us the extra 20 rounds. Moving on to our secondary, which is the ACS-12. This is going to help us gain our Heartbreaker stacks a lot faster. We have 5% weapon handling on the scope and 10% accuracy on the vertical grip. Looking at the talent, we have Vindictive. Can an enemy with a status effect applied grants you and your allies within 15 meters, 15% critical hit chance and 15% critical hit damage for 20 seconds. Easy talent to use, stun them with the Banshee Pulse, get a kill and you'll gain this extra damage. Moving on to the sidearm and this you can stack along with the Vindictive talent, so one on top of the other. We have the Named Orbit Pistol, 20% reload speed on the drum and 10% accuracy on the site. And the talent we have is Perfect Finisher, swapping from this weapon within 10 seconds of killing an enemy grants 35% critical hit chance and 40% critical hit damage for 15 seconds, 5 seconds short of the Vindictive buff. Moving on to the gear pieces now guys, starting off with the Heartbreaker Mask. As you can see we have 15% Assault Rifle damage and 50% LMG damage which won't apply to this build but it doesn't matter because the 4 piece is so, so strong. We also gain 15% weapon handling from the free piece that also is going to help with the terrible accuracy of some of these SMGs that we're using. We have 15% weapon damage, 6% critical hit chance and 12% critical hit damage via a mod. Moving on to our chest piece, we have max armor at 170k, 12% critical hit damage, 12% critical hit damage via a mod. And then we have the max BP and talent increases max stacks from Heartstopper from 50 to 100. Moving on to our holster. We have 15% weapon damage and 12% critical hit damage. Our knee pads are the Fox Prayer knee pads. The main reason we're using these is because we get the 8% damage to targets out of cover, which is more applicative damage. We have 15% weapon damage, 8% damage to targets out of cover, and 12% critical hit damage. Moving on to our gloves, we have 170k armor with 12% critical hit damage. And finally, the Memento backpack giving us 3 cores, 15% weapon damage, 170k armor and 1 skill tier. And then we have 12% critical hit damage via mod and the kill confirmed talent. For those of you who do not have the Memento backpack, then I recommend a Grupo Sombra or a Fenris backpack. And then use the Vigilance talent. This talent goes very well with this build because when you have bonus armor, it stacks over your base armor. So when you take damage while having bonus armor, you don't lose the Vigilance talent. Moving on to the skills, and this is a build that doesn't require a shield, so don't forget to smash that like button. We have the Striker Drone, which is going to help push enemies as well. Because for some reason when it shoots them in the head, they light up. We have 7.5% duration, 10% health, and then 4.8% damage. Moving on to my favourite skill in the game, the Banshee Pulse, we have 15% radius on that mod and 15% effect duration on that mod. And that is pretty much it for the build guys, going to move on to the stat sheet now, I'm not going to talk through it. Let me know what you think about this build in the comment section below, a pretty basic and easy build to make for any of you who are returning to the game. A lot of fun to use, gets you through content really fast. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button to help us reach that 500 like goal and I'll catch you guys in the next one.
Peace out, Moss Squad.